Virginia time travel, your portal to the Commonwealth's past, present, and future. I thought in this episode I would update you on some of the subjects we've been dealing with on our website at uh, www.timetravel21.com. We've been running a series on women in the Civil War, women such as Mary Walker. Mary Walker was the first woman prisoner of war taken in the Civil War. Dr. Mary Walker was a Union Army contract surgeon who was captured on April the 10th, 1864. Dr. Walker was imprisoned in the military prison in Richmond, Virginia, known as Castle Thunder. She was released on August the 12th, 1864, in a prisoner exchange. Dr. Walker was awarded the Medal of Honor for her service as a surgeon during the Civil War. Now, she is actually the only woman to have ever received the Congressional Medal of Honor. But when the criteria for awarding the medal changed in 1917, Dr. Walker's medal was rescinded, along with 900 others. In 1977, the Army Board of Records Corrections reviewed the case and reversed the 1917 decision, restoring the Medal of Honor to Dr. Walker. Another um, interesting woman from this era is one Loretta Velasquez. Cuban-born Loretta Velasquez disguised herself as a man and enlisted in the Confederate Army as Lieutenant Harry T. Buford in 1861. She raised a company of volunteers from Arkansas and fought in the Battle of First Manassas, Balls Bluff, and Fort Donelson. In 1862, her disguise was discovered and she was discharged from the Army. Velasquez then enlisted with the 21st Louisiana Infantry, Louisiana Infantry, and went on to fight at Shiloh. She Velasquez's disguise was discovered yet again, and she was once again discharged. The resourceful Velasquez then became a spy for the Confederacy, often posing as a man. Now, almost everything known about Loretta Velasquez comes from a 600-page book she published in 1876 entitled, The Woman in Battle. The Woman in Battle is written in the popular romantic style of the 19th century and is similar to books portraying the lives and adventures of Wild West heroes such as Bat Masterson and Wyatt Earp. When the book first appeared, Velasquez stated that she had written the book primarily for money so she could support her child. Shortly after its appearance, former Confederate General Jubal Early denounced the woman in battle as an obvious fiction. Historians are divided concerning the truth of Velasquez's claims to have served as a Confederate soldier and spy, citing the improbability of her many adventures and her vagueness and inaccuracies regarding names and places. Most historians have found it difficult to corroborate her claims from existing written evidence, although there have been some tantalizing finds that lend some credence to the Velasquez story. Notwithstanding the criticisms, some historians note that Velasquez seems extremely familiar with key events of the time. In short, there is at least a seed of truth in her story. Brave soldier and spy or literary opportunist? History's jury is still out on the case of Loretta Velasquez. Our new historical novel, Confederate Woman, Soldier, and Spy, is based 
on the life and exploits of Loretta Velasquez. Well, the Confederacy had some other women in uniform who were less controversial. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Lucy Minnie Otte, a 60-year-old widow, organized 500 women of Lynchburg into the Ladies' Relief Society. The duties of the members of the society included preparing and delivering food to the wounded in hospitals, making bandages, mending clothes, and assisting surgeons in any way possible. Women wrote letters for soldiers and kept patients comfortable. One morning, when arriving at a hospital, Mina Ati was denied access by order of Dr. W. O. Owen, the head of the Lynchburg Military Hospitals. Dr. Owen ordered the removal of Ati and all women from the hospital, stating, no more women or flies are to be admitted. Ati immediately traveled to Richmond to talk to President Jefferson Davis to get his personal permission to found her own hospital, run entirely by female nurses. Davis agreed. Corruption and mismanagement became a frequent issue in Confederate hospitals. The Confederate government eventually ordered the shutdown of all medical institutions that were not under direct government control. If a hospital was not headed by a commissioned officer, who was at least a captain, then patients had to be moved. Well, because of her excellence as a hospital administrator and her service to the Confederacy, Mrs. Audie was named a captain in the Confederate Army by President Jefferson Davis. Only one other woman received a commission in the Confederate Army. That other woman was Sally Tompkins, who ran a hospital in Richmond. Now, here's an interesting story we recently covered concerning a black spy in the Confederate White House. Elizabeth Van Lu of Richmond, although from a good family, was an ardent Unionist who refused to leave town even as the Confederate government took up residence. Her continued devotion to the Union cause was considered just another of the eccentricities of the woman her neighbors came to call Crazy Bet. Van Lu began to accentuate her eccentricities. As she walked along the street, she mumbled and hummed to herself, head bent to one side holding imaginary conversations. Her disguise served her well as she set up a wide-reaching spy ring within the Confederate Capitol, and some say within the Confederate White House itself. Lou began visiting Richmond's Libby Prison, where Union POWs were imprisoned. As a humanitarian gesture, Van Lou brought food, medicine, and books to the prisoners. She came out with military information. Newly arrived Union prisoners secretly recounted the strength and dispositions of Confederate troops they had seen on their way from the front to Richmond. As the war progressed, Van Lu was able to place fellow Union sympathizers within the Confederate War and Navy departments and regularly smuggled out of Richmond information hidden in hollow eggs. General Grant would later say of her efforts, you have sent me the most valuable information received from Richmond during the war. Van Lu's most daring purported accomplishment remained shrouded in mystery and involved insinuating one of her former servants 
Mary Elizabeth Bowser, also known as Mary Jane Richards, into the Confederate White House. Bowser had been a slave of the Van Loo family, but Van Loo freed her and sent her north to be educated many years before the war. When Van Loo established her spy ring, she asked Bowser to return and work with her for the Union. Van Loo obtained a position for Bowser as a servant in the Confederate White House through the recommendations of a friend who provided supplies to the White House. Bowser reported conversations she overheard and the content of documents she was able to read while working in the House. Another Union spy, Thomas McNiven, noted that Bowser had a photographic memory and could report every word of the document she saw. Stories about Bowser appeared as early as May 1900 in Richmond newspapers. In a 1910 interview with Van Loo's niece, Bowser was revealed as being part of the spy ring. But at this time, Jefferson Davis's wife, Verena, publicly denied that a black female spy could have infiltrated the Confederate White House and denied any knowledge of such a person as Mary Elizabeth Bowser. Notwithstanding this, Mary Elizabeth Bowser was inducted into the U.S. Army Intelligence Hall of Fame at Fort Huachuca, Arizona, on 30 June, 1995.